Hello everybody, welcome back to a fresh new episode of I Talk to Notebooks. My name is Sarah and I'm going to be doing a flip through of my second journal of all time today. Um, a few things to get started. Why did I take so long to go to journal number two after I've done a flip through of journal number one a long time ago? Well, journal number one is an easy journal to talk about because I was 10 and I was happy and I was kind of a good person according to that journal. I mean, now is anybody a good person? That's a deep philosophical question that I have many thoughts about and we won't get into that today, but it seemed that way for my journal. So I'm gonna say that. Starting with journal two, it's a lot more like the real me. I'm going to show some pages, but I'm also gonna just kind of take it away and read some things. So just, since it's about my journal, it's gonna be a lot about my life. This is mostly writing. But we're gonna get through this. So elephant in the room, <laughs> let's talk about all this situation here. So this is a finger crochet that I made with a friend of mine, a friend of our family's. Um, so we visit, we go out to the Midwest where my parents grew up and I have all my relatives and my mom has a friend out there who has kids who are around the same age as my brother and I. And uh, every time I go and visit, that, went to visit that family, it was only a couple times a year when we were little, when we were kids. Every time I would just have the best time with this little girl around my age, we would just have the best time together. And uh, I just loved her so much and we made these finger crochets together. And um, I was just so happy and we had such a good time and I felt they were so special. I just saved them in this little, I just stuffed them in here. And let me tell you, this is my cat's favorite journal of mine um, for obvious reasons. So <laughs> it's a hit with her. And yeah, I've lost touch with most of the people I wrote about in my journals and this girl and I, we still, we actually are still sort of in touch on social media, but we don't really like talk one on one. It's a bummer. All right, other cringe going on here. We have my title. I named my journals at one point. And let me just tell you, I'd like to say that I did this when I was 12. I'd like to say that I decided to name this journal Fierce Sapling when I was 12. <sighs> I'm like having a moment of should I say when it was. It was literally, I was in college when I named this journal Fierce Sapling. So I'm sorry to the world in general for the way that I am. Volume two, in case you didn't notice the two down here. And I took this journal to camp and I wrote bad idea, don't even think about it, and I put Bullard. And I put Bullard, I put a piece of masking tape and Bullard on everything I took to camp because I was sure I was gonna lose something. I lost everything. And my, I got made fun of for it a little bit, not in like a bad nature way, but it was super, super dorky and I deserved it. So let's open up to the first page. Um, just checking to make sure we're in frame. Okay, cool. You may, oh, just yank that page right out. Okay, so I numbered the pages in this one too. Um, and that was for another project that we'll get into back in college. I added these page numbers when I was in school, uh, college. So I put all these stickers here. These are so nostalgic. I just love looking at these old stickers. Um, and it says, this journal is the property of Sarah Elaine Bullard. Snooping, not prohibited, but it is resented. And um, I should have prohibited it. I don't know why I wrote that. I guess because when I was that age, like I was very much taught to be, you know, submissive to authority and things like that. So I didn't feel like I had the right to prohibit anybody from reading my journal, which is kind of sad. Boundaries are good, people. Um, so it starts in January 31st of 2009 and it goes to June 10th of 2009. So about six months, it's a really skinny notebook. And um, I was 12 that year, so. You may wonder, doesn't this sound like something a seven or six year old would write? Well, yes, but I was 12, I assure you. And I was still running to Snoopy. So this first page says, Dear Snoopy, I just finished decorating your new notebook. How do you like it? I think it's lovely. Your old one is in a safe place, trust me. Not sure where that was. Then I was drawing these pictures with my Crayola Super Tips. You know, screw it. I know these aren't good pictures, but I still like looking at them. They still give me a sense of profound comfort to look at them, especially this one with the fire in the fireplace. That's nice. They're called Alice and Emma, and they're just made up characters that I drew with no faces. And then here's more pictures of them. So here's one where they're riding horses. I used to be obsessed with, I think I was still obsessed with ponies when I was that age. Um, so there they are. Maybe a little bit past that phase, but you can see the residual horse girl there. And then there they are looking at clouds. Why are there big pink polka dots on the ground? Are those blood stains? I don't know. I don't know what that was about. Maybe they were supposed to be flowers. We'll go with that. And then we have this one of them sliding down a rainbow together. <sighs> so that's nice. I thought that I'd draw the sky in between her hair because it wouldn't be, I don't know what I was thinking. That's not how cartoons work. 
Okay, so I'm gonna, oh, right. And then I did another ball comic. You may have noticed that from my first flip through as I drew these comics with this little character who looks like Pac-Man. And you may think this is copied directly from Pac-Man and perhaps on a subconscious level, I had seen Pac-Man and copied it, but I don't think I knew about Pac-Man back then. So he's fighting his enemy, the cube, and his assistant is a sphere. So I was really, I mean, you can see how popular I must have been as a kid, right? All right, I'm going to just take this journal away and do a little bit of just boring s summaries because I don't want to show private names or private information in here because this journal is a little cringier. Um, so I'm talking about falling in the mud when I went to go play with my friends and my mother was mad at me. So I got all muddy. <laughs> and then my best friend had a crush on someone and I was writing about that. You can look at my cat while I'm reading. Um, I memorized a part of Romans 8 in Latin. So I need to let you know at this point, because it is relevant to this journal, that I was uh, homeschooled in a, in a very religious community for like the first, all the way through eighth grade since I was like 13. And then in high school, I went to public school, but was still like heavily involved in the church and the youth group and everything. So this is just a big part of my life. But even for like a homeschool girl, I was like that girl who was a fedora wearing nice guy and simultaneously not like the other girls like it was a lot so yes i memorized part of romans 8 in latin and that was probably something that i was told to do um my cat just rubbed her teeth on the phone something that i was told to do for school or something so then i'm talking about oh i want to write a book i always wanted to write a book so talking about what kind of book i want to write and settling on something autobiographical even though i was 12 and didn't even have a biography to write and i'm talking about a boy that i like and then I'm talking about drama with friends and not fitting in, not getting along with people, feeling left out, you know, feeling just sad, like I don't fit in. And here it says, I was mad at some of my friends and it says, but someday I will get my revenge. And I will tell you something, I did not get my revenge, sadly. And then I'm talking about how much I like springtime and then more social anxiety, just so much social anxiety. One, two, three, four five pages of social anxiety um or things about my crush um braces problems i was also in a band a homeschool band there were that many homeschool kids that we had a band and an orchestra there were all kinds of things that it's just a big community and just drama from band um stuff that happened there and then there was this event that we did at my church that was like a prom, but it wasn't really a prom because it was church. We couldn't have people dancing. So um, the boys would put on this big show and then they would like serve the girls dinner and um, the girls would dress up really nice. So it was supposed to teach like, uh, I guess it was supposed to teach the girls to like let boys like take care of them and to teach boys to like be nice girls and like, you know, serve them food and stuff. It's not a bad message. If, but if you think about it, it was really more about the show that the boys put on and like them being like cool and the center of attention. And the best example of this is that I had written about this in my journal as well, was that um, we would always be waiting in the cold. We'd get there at the time the event started and we'd just wait outside in the church parking lot in the freezing cold for like probably upwards of 15 minutes and us being generous, it was probably a lot more than that um, because the boys would be running late. So it's like, oh yeah, serve, serve girls, be nice to girls, but uh, also, like, not really. That's just kind of, <laughs> don't really care about their comfort if you have to plan like your show or whatever. So that, that was just an interesting situation. And I was writing about um, what I was wearing. It was a big deal. It was one time of the year I got to wear makeup and dress up. My mom would get makeup for me and do my hair. And it was a whole thing. Very exciting times. I, I remember my friend and I growing up. I wish <laughs> I should talk to her about this actually. Um, we'd always pick out these dresses and they, you know, we're 12 and we're Christian girls. So we have dresses that are like, you know, they're not revealing by any means. It's not like there's cleavage showing or anything, but you know, if there's like, like one year I wanted to wear a strapless dress, but even like if you wanted to wear spaghetti straps or um, even like a thin tank top, I mean, just immediately you'd have to wear a giant shawl. And my friend and I were always so annoyed because our mothers would just like swaddle us in these huge, like almost, they, basically they were blankets, they just gigantic shawls that went down to the floor. I have all these pictures from these events where I just had this beautiful dress, but you couldn't see it because I was just covered in a shawl because our church was like super obsessed with modesty. That was like a huge thing. Like girls have to always cover up. So yeah, if a 12 year old's arms are causing problems, 
I don't know if a shawl is gonna fix that. <laughs> I feel like there's nothing she can do to fix the fact that her arms are causing problems for people. Um, but anyway, that's my rant about that particular event. There were definitely a lot of good times. It was a, mostly a good memory. Um, I'm just kind of annoyed looking back at some of the, oh, and of course the, the food itself was not cooked by, but they should have had, they should have had the dads cook all the food, right? But no, of course it was the moms sleeping away making lasagna and then the boys just brought it out on plates. So that's a, that's interesting too, I think. Um, so talking about my crush again, some more, and then, oh, I did a drawing. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything more gorgeous in your life? Look at these hands. Look at this face. Look at that chin. That is a chiseled jawline. Okay. Forget contouring. This is what our jaws should look like. Okay. Um, I couldn't draw hands and it was the subject of a lot of good natured teasing because I love drawing but my hands I just didn't even bother and they always looked like shovels like that and my dad died laughing at me drawing those not in like a bad way but <laughs> my friends too other than the fact that she looks mentally ill and her left hand looks like an f graded student of plastic surgery practiced on it do you like her dress I designed it myself I do like that dress it was a good one then we went to the event. So I'd been talking about the dress that I was gonna wear and getting ready for it and going to buy makeup to wear to it. It's a huge deal. I was at the beginning of my love of makeup, just blossoming at the beginning there. But um, we went and it was really fun. And we went to Philadelphia shortly after. I don't know what we were doing in Philadelphia. I could not tell you. Maybe to see the Liberty Bell? Um, but no, I think we were meeting some family members because I was trying for my grandpa's birthday. Very strange. So I talked about my dress, what it looked like. I talked about my makeup and my hair and how my mom helped me. And you know, they would have the boys wheel the girls in on swivel chairs down this long hallway. And I still don't understand that. Our youth group was really quirky and funny. And there were the people are really, really good. The leaders just really good, solid people. I'm not sure that the teachings were the best in retrospect, but I think everybody had their heart in the right place. And I really, have some fond memories there and my life wouldn't be the same without them so um anyways <laughs> oh this one boy said something super weird to me um nothing inappropriate it was just he's just a really really weird guy oh so funny and then um and i just hated being served and stuff it was just so awkward um but i like dressing up and um yeah i wanted to be seen by the boy that i liked um, and then I wrote about all the things that the boys did, all the shows that they did, and, um, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so then, just talking more about my grandpa's birthday and going to Philadelphia, I was crocheting him a pot holder. And all the food that we ate with various family members, going to McDonald's, going to this diner place. I wrote so much detail about the food, and I wasn't even like that into food back then, but chocolate pancakes, chocolate milk. I felt sick after that too, that's a quote. Uh, yeah, so then we toured Valley Forge. I remember this, yes, we did. We met my grandparents there and we toured Valley Forge. And I think maybe Gettysburg. That, that's not there. Please don't make fun of me. I don't know where anything is on this planet. And it says, my grandpa asked me an interesting question today. Would I rather live in pioneer times or a hundred years into the future? I picked the future, of course, and he said, Pioneer times seem nice, and what if a hundred years into the future, Earth was ruled by little green aliens? And that's just, my grandpa, even to this day, he visited me when I was in college, he still asks weird questions like that. He, he really wants, I don't know, he's, he's an interesting character. That's just like how he is. He asks like weird questions like that, and it's interesting to talk about. And I think it's a valid strategy to try to connect with people. Like if you don't, I don't see my grandparents that much, so. You know, it's not always sure what to talk about, especially since, you know, it's a little different just with their generation and he's my grandpa. I maybe get along a little bit better with my grandma just because we're both girls. And he, you know, it might not be the same if we were the same age, but since he's older, I think there's just a little bit more awkwardness there. And he just seems really to want to connect with me and that really was nice, you know? So then on one of our tour stops, I peeled the bark off of a stick and found another much shorter one already peeled. I laid them in a grassy area in a cross shape. I think everyone is so obsessed with how great those men were that they forget that God was behind it all. Maybe it will inspire someone. It can't hurt. I think I'm going to start doing that more often. 
there's just so many layers to that, but I'm not even gonna get into it. Not even gonna get into it, we all know. But then to drive home my piety, my Christian godliness, I drew this. And that is a deranged, psychopathic zombie woman with knives and axes for hair. So if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> then we talked more about our touring. Oh no, here's another one. Last night I got a chain email. I scrolled down through pages and pages of forwarding until I got to the bottom. When I finally got to the bottom, it said that Bloody Mary would kill me, hurt me, or seriously scare me if I didn't send it to five people. That email had me scared silly, but I know it was fake because whoever wrote it originally told three horror stories about kids who hadn't sent it on. How could he have, how could he have that story if he hadn't even sent it out yet? Still, since Bloody Mary was supposed to come at 12.01, somewhere around 11.40, I got in bed with mom. Dad was kind enough to go downstairs. I decided to reread the section on Bloody Mary in The Daring Book for Girls. Did anybody else have that book? I love that book. There are so many different theories on her that it's kind of hard to decide. Then I just wrote like eight pages on theories about Bloody Mary. I should write a story about Bloody Mary. Which one's my favorite theory? Oh my goodness. Then I have a note about my piano lesson. My teacher was so encouraging. She was really sweet to me. All right, and then we have more of the ball here. Just gonna go through here. So crazy. More ball. I think that's the end of him. My sphere drawings really kind of went downhill and that doesn't look right. Oh, I shared it with my brother and he thought it was funny. He probably thought anything I did was funny, to be fair. He was pretty, the bar's pretty low. <laughs> I had a good audience in him. All right, then I have the story. So I was also, as I mentioned, in the band. So I'm going to, okay, so it says, Dear Snoopy, you'll never guess what happened last night at band. It involved this person I'm gonna call R, who was really good at the clarinet, a chamber orchestra conductor, and a piece of my bass clarinet with me in the middle of it all. Exhilarated from percussion class, I plopped down my wind ensemble chair and started assembling my bass clarinet. And I drew a diagram, I'll show it on screen. Um, it says, the bottom of a bass clarinet. Pin protrudes from other side of metal. Name's most likely incorrect. I unscrewed the knob so I could fit the rod into the metal. However, it wouldn't go in. I unscrewed the knob some more, but to no avail. I unscrewed the knob so much that the knob popped off and both it and the pin clattered to the floor. The band conductor rushed up front and announced that we'd warm up with the Navy hymn. I quickly retrieved the pin, but the knob was nowhere in sight. As I frantically scanned the gleaming white tiles, the Navy hymn drew to a close. The band conductor said, what a lovely warm up. Then he looked over at me with no bass, he added. She's almost ready though. I shot him an apologetic look and leaned back in my chair, certain I'd just have to manage without it. Without the rod, it was okay. It was really low to the ground, so I played all hunched over. Dad, who was doing percussion, so he was standing behind me, yelled, Sarah, Sarah, sit up straight. I tried to tell him that I couldn't, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. That was kind of funny because I was all hunched over because I couldn't, yeah, anyway. Fascinating stories. I mean, really, one day people are gonna write a book about it. And my dad got really sick and I had to go to the hospital, but he was fine. Wasn't getting along with my family too well. And then I wasn't getting along that well with my friends because I was a huge dork. And then there was more band related drama. More drama with my crush. And then I've got uh, a picture here of different types of frogs. This really cracked me up. So you have the two-headed snake, which I've been obsessed with since a young age. The free frog, which you can compare to the domestic frog, which is here. We have the crazy frog who's in a straight jacket and a vampire frog for mom, because she was reading the Twilight series. The skeleton frog, and then this is my personal favorite, is the ghost frog under a sheet there. That, that cracks me up. That's not even a bad drawing. That's pretty funny. Um, so then, Oh, I had to wear this really ugly swimsuit that was also really expensive. My mom got it for me because I had had back surgery recently and I couldn't have my scar exposed to the sunlight. So I had to wear a water polo swimsuit. It's super dorky, but it did the job. Then I got strep throat and I have like 14, 14 pages about strep throat and also Harry Potter because I was reading Harry Potter and I read like the whole series in bed 
<laughs> when I was sick. Strep throat, I have, I have tonsils that are huge. Every time I go to the doctor or a new doctor, they're like, do you know your tonsils are gigantic? Yes, I do. We should probably take your tonsils out. Every doctor has said that and it's never been necessary. So I just, you know, if you tell them, they don't listen, but eventually they figure it out. So <sighs> never had my tonsils out. But yeah, when I get strep throat, I've had it twice in my life and that is that's pretty deadly. I mean, that'll knock me out because it's not like, some people get strep throat and it's bad, but I can't even swallow when I get strep throat. I mean, I have to go to the doctor immediately to get like something done so that I don't like choke on my own tonsils. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's pretty serious. So I was making a teddy bear and just more, so much more drama about the strep throat and then my crush smiled at me which was a huge deal because he never smiled at me that was a big deal and then I held his hand when did I hold his hand that doesn't sound right oh you know what happened is there was I don't know I guess we did something we were in a play or something or a musical and we had to take a bow and I held his hand I don't know, man. It, we did, I did so many things as a kid. I don't know how I didn't just have a mental breakdown because I don't even do that much stuff now and I'm a full grown adult with like a cat. And I just did so much stuff back then. Oh, and then like the last part of the journal is um, almost the rest of it is just me sure that I have magical powers and describing them in great detail. Um, and then finally, there's just more drama with people, me not getting along with people very well at all. So, yeah, good job being a total loser. I've shown this before, but this is how it ends. Uh, sports teams, because I'm such a sports fan, don't know. I don't even, I honestly, okay, Green Bay Packers, that's a football team. I was going to say, I don't even know what sport this is. But yeah, this is football. Even I know that. Um, we've already been over this. I was 12. It, things didn't get better. And yeah, I don't I wouldn't put this on my car now. Let me just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and then we have all the states here on the back. So thank you if you made it this far. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for being subscribed. And if you need to unsubscribe now, I totally understand. But you will be missed. And let me know if there's any way I can improve these videos. I can't really show anymore because there's mostly writing. In more of my recent journals, like once we get into the college phase, there was a lot more visual stuff to show. But even that, I mean, it's going to be a lot of pulling the journal away and reading things or summarizing things because I don't want to share people's personal information or names. I have photographs in some of my journals that I don't want people to see people's faces who haven't consented to do it. So it's just a whole thing. Um, yeah, but I think that flip throughs are an important part of any journaling channel, so I just decided to get over it and do it. So I will see you all next time. Goodbye.